Hello, my juicy co-creators. Lilou here. I'm in France, in Reims. I have another interview in English for you because I'm sitting next to a German physicist. So obviously, English language being the universal one, this is the best one to, to have this conversation in. Huh? Okay, thank you. So thank you. You're one of the, the speakers here at this big event, a huge event. Huh? Lots of people were in this beautiful space here in Reims. And uh, are you going to speak? To, have you, are you tomorrow, today? No, no today. In, in two hours, I have my presentation. In front of uh, 1,200 people, I think, if not more. Huh? No, could be, could be. It's, uh, it's very crowded. Yes. So tell me uh, a, a little bit about your work, because I did my research, but I would really love to understand, because I, I, I saw some things saying that you kind of was very interested about the Telsa work, and that you then kind of continued a little bit along this genius work that he has done and found a missing link, maybe? Is that right? I mean, what is... Tell us what your work is about. Well, what Tesla did was uh, practical engineering, and uh, he has said he has had no uh, theory, and this is why he was not publishing anything in this direction, only about the practical application for wireless transmission of energy. And he even was speaking about the biological effectiveness. My uh, way was very different from his. Uh, I came from the theory so I um, was writing my PhD about uh, vortex calculations and measurements and showing that these uh, calculations are right and then at that point I found out that uh, we only know uh, ex uh, expanding vortices we call them eddy currents in electrical engineering and we have no contracting vortex you know that The contracting vortex, for instance, is uh, forming um, a tornado. If uh, you have such a storm, you see. Um, you need to have these contracting vortex from outside and the expanding from inside. Uh, so one needs the other to have a special structure. And in uh, electrical engineering, they have forgotten to describe the contracting vortex. I call this... Uh, um, potential vortex mm -hmm. and uh, when my my theory was ready it's now a long time ago it was 1990 when I have uh, published my first paper and my first book um, and in at that time I could um, publish a bit because uh, I was promoted by a colleague Um, from the university in Dresden, he has given me an award for my my first books in 1994. It was, and I could publish, but the second publication was stopped with the argument that if I would be right, then I would have to expand the Maxwell equation at one point because they have put. I tell this only. In, in, in mathematics uh, description, it's called the third Maxwell equation. The divergence B, what is the magnetic flux density, is zero. So I said, it, this is a special case. And they said, no, if it would be not zero, then we would have magnetic monopoles. And so my scientific work at this point was stopped um, well, in 2009, we know, 20 years later, They have developed magnetic monopoles and now my um, approach is accepted. Not by all, because some are still living in the past, you know, some colleagues, but those who are open-minded, they accept it and they uh, see that, that uh, this has a reality, what I have done. And when I was stopped, I go now 20 years back, uh, that was in 1995, 96 about, at that time, Um, there, uh, ha I have had a lot of discussions and one said you have to follow up what Nikola Tesla has done because he has developed some strange things nobody is, is uh, able to understand and uh, has accepted and this could be a proof for my theory 
And then I started with this research. And in 1999, it was the first time when we could uh, show in a public presentation a rebuild of Nikola Tesla, uh, which was uh, proving that Tesla absolutely was right. He has really explained everything uh, which could be reproduced by my experimental setup. Mm. Well, and then we started to bring this setup into the market so that everybody is able to uh, use it and to reproduce these results uh, if he is interested in, because nobody was believing at that time, you see. That what, was is the, what is the physical application of that? Like, what does it mean for us? Uh, because Tesla, I mean, uh, he's, he developed so many things. I mean, he seems to have been all over the place on so many different levels. And on the Internet, there's so much information about it. Like, we don't even know what's right or wrong. You know, and and what are the the the, the you know the, the the material implication? I mean, on Earth, like, what does that translate into? Well, uh, the view normal people have about Tesla is not uh, very correct. This is uh, the esoteric uh, corner, which is now capturing him and uh, talking about him. And so there are the transportation. Yeah, this is, but it's not the truth, you see. And um, he has been an engineer and he was working very hard and was uh, developing a lot of things which are really usable. And he was talking the first about wireless transmission of energy. And this is one of the points I wanted to reproduce because nowadays we need this technology. If we want to have electric cars, Politik wants it then we have to um, bring the energy to the cars by driving. So we can't store everything. These electric cars are too expensive because of the batteries, of the costs of the batteries. And they, they last uh, not very long and they are very heavy and they're very expensive. So this is the problem for the car industry. And uh, if we would have some um, transmitters in our environment which are uh, transmitting the energy, and if we have um, a special um, um, pro program or, or modulation uh, so that only those who are paying for the power are getting the power, this is absolutely necessary to have such a system, um, then I could think that this could be in use in the future. Mm. But it's a long way. Yeah. I had a chance to interview uh, Foster Gamble, you know, that developed the movies Thrive, and uh, he's in contact with many uh, inventors of free energy. Yes, I know him. Uh, I, I met him in um, um, Albuquerque, um, New Mexico, last year on the Tesla Tech Conference, because I'm more often at this conference, and uh, he as well. Um, well, the free energy... Um, uh, group is always uh, looking for energy with no costs, but you know this doesn't exist. Uh, all all the sources are free anyway. The the sun is shining. We don't pay for the sun, but we have to pay for the devices which are changing uh, the power to uh, well to the usable electric power. And anyway, we would have to have such uh, devices as well and. Politics is uh, sharing with, um, uh, with yeah, uh, always driving with my car as a passenger mm -hmm. and <laughs> a blind one, you see. And so we, we have to, t to pay tax and so on. So this, this is a dream to have free energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, there are a lot of dreamers and let them dream, okay. Uh, yeah. I say... The problem is that if you um, want to have energy, you need a receiver for this energy and you have to look where the energy is coming from because if it's coming from the sun, then we have won. But if it's coming from maybe a technical device from Russia, from America, from wherever, then uh, it's only a transmission of energy. Anyway, uh, this is why I... I prefer um, to talk about um, wireless transmission of energy instead of free energy. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a vice president of the German group for uh, free energy, so uh, <laughs> uh, 
I, I know your question quite well, but um, I think... Uh, it's interesting to hear you. I, was saying, I appreciate it. I know it's not an easy one, especially it's, it's yeah. in transition. So. Yes, and, and there are some in our environment, some uh, transmitters, uh, because every, every uh, transmitter, radio transmitter, TV transmitter, whatever, uh, military transmitters, they all send as well a part uh, as a scalar wave. And the scalar wave part is carrying energy and could be used as, as a source of free energy. And if you don't know where it's, the energy is coming from, then it could be a problem because it's, it's not a solution for our world if you get the energy from another power plant only wirelessly. Mm -hmm. It is better than, uh, than uh, to have um, only these, uh, well, these transport of, of oil and of gas and you know all the problems. If, if um, an accident w could happen, it will happen. Mm -hmm. And if we have it wirelessly, it's much better. Mm. So what is your dream, if there is such a thing, or how, how does this translate into, into the reality? Well, uh, I, have, I have dreams anyway, uh, because uh, my dream is that my uh, theory is, uh, is coming to use, in practical use. And uh, there are two possibilities. One for power, power application, what we are talking about, and the other is for biological application. Uh, because um, I explained it in my presentation that we know that we have three waves. In former times, they were talking about two type, types of waves, the transverse and the long tail wave. The transverse wave, uh, Heinrich Hertz has developed. The um, long tail wave, Nikola Tesla, has developed, but he was always working with ball electrodes. That means like a capacitor from positive to negative charge. Then he has the propagation of these long tail waves in the direction of the electric field pointer. And what I point out in my presentation is that there is even the possibility of propagation in the direction of the magnetic field pointer. And this is what the bio biology is using. So this field is absolutely new. Uh, this uh, wave, this uh, magnetic scalar wave, I call it. And um, the biology, the, the uh, DNA, for instance, is using such a magnetic scalar wave. This is what I, what I pick out and what I show and what I explain and what we prove with some experiments I'm talking about at several um, uh, institutions in Germany, in Spain, in Italy, and as well in France. Mm. So, so you're here to revolution revolutionize uh, human being and our way of living, huh? <laughs> you see, um, the uh, human being is explained uh, today by uh, biochemistry. And uh, biochemistry, well, I learned at school that if it's chemistry, it smells strong or it makes bang, you see. But uh, how is chemistry ordered in such a um, complex order as uh, our body is or plants are? Uh, we need some signaling. And this signaling is the magnetic scalar wave. This is what I'm showing. So if we have this approach and if we accept this approach then uh, this will uh, lead to a totally new view on how nature is working. Thank you so much, Konstantin. Thank you for this interview. Thank you for the interview as well. <laughs> <laughs> big, big kisses to all co-creators out there. Much, much love from Reims in France. Yeah. Bye.